Welcome to Wager Talk TV. This is Ask the Experts. I'm Kelly Stewart, joined by Ralph Michaels at Cal Sports LV. Teddy Covers at Teddy underscore Covers. Make sure you guys are giving them a follow on Twitter. This question comes from at James T. Wade. Betting college football lines when they first come out, or do you wait until the season starts? Are there certain tips or things you guys look for? Uh, betting conference championship futures in college football and how to recognize value in any futures when betting college football. Lots of stuff from James. I'll let you guys dissect that one. We'll start off. Uh, Teddy, your thoughts on uh, college football lines. We know games of the year start to come out here shortly, things of that nature. Your thoughts on uh, betting now or waiting? Sure. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the college football betting marketplace over the summer months. Uh, an excellent question. A lot to get to. I'm not going to try to get to all of it. Ralph will get to the rest. Uh, I'm sure at least some of it. Uh, but my number one point I'm going to make here is that when the markets start to move on a team, there's no buyback. It's going to continue to move. So if you see a line go from three to four, there's nothing going to stop until it hits seven. So you may as well get it at four right then and there uh, as opposed to waiting if it's a side that you like, if you've done your homework already, which I'm sure if you're asking this question, uh, you have and you've been watching your college football in the spring and all of that. Uh, so uh, th when the markets start moving, it's always one way. So recognize that, and if you're looking to back the other team, you just wait until September. You know, um, One other key point to make when it comes to futures, you talk about conference futures, the chalk wins a lot, and yet I'm really hesitant to lay a chalk price into a 14-team field or a 12-team field. You're just not getting great value. I will look for some long shots in conference tournament futures, in the conference tournament future board. I always want a quarterback who can play, and an offensive line that can protect them, and that's the top two things I'm looking for. I also like cornerbacks and defensive line, but frankly, if you have a QB that can play and an offensive line that can protect him, you might have a live dog in terms of the long shot on the conference uh, future book. Agree with the O-line, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, Ralph, what are your thoughts Doesn't on... Doesn't have to be returning quarterback. Either he betting... Quarterback. Yes. Yeah. He mentioned conference uh, futures and or to win the college football championship. You know, we talked about with Super Bowl in another video that, eh, it's not really so great to bet a Super Bowl future. Oh. I don't think there's any value. Yeah, you okay. you look at, I mean, they're so diluted. It's not a legitimate payout. If they're getting monies on this, they're not paying you out the true odds. So okay. why, you know, there's only going to be five teams that can win it, yeah, exactly. maybe Who's four teams. Win, Alabama, and what are you going to, you're going right. to play two to one for the whole year. So I wouldn't do that. As far as betting games of the year when they come out, um, it's simple. If you're prepared and you feel confident in your numbers, bet them. Do not feel pressured to bet them. There's a lot of value later. If you are not completely prepared, you have your returning starters, you have your O-lines, you have your D-lines, you have everything back, you have your coaching changes. If you have everything set where your power rating numbers are fine, bet them. If not, don't worry about it. Well, that's it. me. So here, here I am. I'm looking at these lines coming out from, like, our buddies at the Golden Nugget put it out in July, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it. Come October when the game's played, I'm going, holy cow, I could have either gotten a six <laughs> if, if I'm looking at the favorite or – I'm glad I waited because now I'm catching two touchdowns. Well, you know what? Chris at South Point puts him out early. He was first last year, mm -hmm. and there were seven games that moved seven points. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, Michigan. Uh, and five of those, no even if you had the better line, you lost. Right. So even though you had seven points and you think the line moved, that's not going to guarantee a win. They went two and five, those games that were seven points off. Sure, and, and it's worth noting, with the very first college football lines that come up, you're going to see opinions and variance from book to book. So when you start talking about, oh, there was this big line move on this game, well, maybe there wasn't. Maybe it was just a little bit of arbitrage, and the market and said. And two bets changed it. Sure. Two max bets changed that three exactly. points. Exactly. So, so don't be freaked out by these very early lines. That is moves. very true, that they that just a little bit of money can move these early lines. Sure, and what, what, if, if one book opens at three and another book opens at seven, the markets are going to say, hey, it should have been seven or it should have been three or it should be five. Right. You know, and, and, and the one book will have, oh, my God, there was a four-point line move. If you're only looking at the lines from that book, when, in fact, there was no line move. The line was already seven, and the book, and the market said, yeah, well, it should have been seven. Okay. Places, places to bet. They're all going to have – everyone's going to have season win totals. Mm -hmm. Okay. If – Season win totals, good bet. If you like – if you like unders and South Point has the exact same number as someone else mm – -hmm. Bet you're under at South Point because if the game gets canceled, mm -hmm. it's still the same bet. It doesn't matter. Everyone else gets ah. your money back if the game is canceled. So if you have an over, don't bet it at South, South Point. Point. If someone <laughs> else has the same line, yeah. if you have an under, absolutely bet it because we get what? 
five or six games canceled the year. Sure. The Hurricanes and, and are coming. It's still complete action for them. So bet the under at South Point if you can. And I have one more note when you're Good looking at conference, um, when you're doing conference um, futures. Make sure you're looking at conference-only stats. One example last year. I mean, Mississippi played four non-conference teams. Texas Tech, uh, which was a good team, but Southern Illinois, Kent State, ULM, they, they outscored those teams 146 to like 60. They right. crushed them. When they got into conference play, they were minus 51 yards per game, and they were minus .9 yards per play. So in the Sun Belt, Sometimes ULM, ULM is forced to play multiple Power Five teams yeah, to pay for their program. Yeah. Tough. Appalachian State usually doesn't. So throw away those stats. Look at conference-only stats when you're comparing teams. And also, don't forget crossovers. Crossovers is one of the most important things people don't look at. An example in the SEC this year, South Carolina plays Alabama and Texas A&M from the other division. Missouri plays Arkansas and Old Miss. Well, which one's better? You're thinking yeah. both playing SEC schedules, not even close. Tennessee this last year, their crossover games, Alabama and Auburn. So you have to look at crossovers. Every conference has them now where you're not playing every opponent from the other divisions. Make sure you're looking at those crossover games. All right, great stuff, guys. Make sure you listen to the Wager Talk podcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and all major podcast networks.